Okay, this is a very quick video just to show you how you can get full screen resolution, full HD, high frame rate, 50 frames per second screen capture with perfect audio synchronization on FreeBSD or Linux. The reason I'm making this video is because I spent the entire afternoon trying to get this right pissing around with tools like uh, record my desktop, messing around with FFmpeg and I almost tore my hair out and almost gave up. No, I didn't. I didn't almost give up because I'm kind of insane. But I managed to get there in the end. So just to sh I'll show you how good the audio synchronization is and how perfect this is. So enter, enter, enter. Uh, this is me typing, typing something. You can see, you can hear the key presses, you can see that the audio is perfectly synced. If I go onto YouTube and play play a video, you can see that even the video is coming out fine. Oh, look, beautiful woman swimming, uh, baboon's ass. Oh no, that was a horrible juxtaposition there to inflict upon you. But I saw it and I, you know, I felt I needed to do it to someone else as a kind of catharsis. So there you go. And the reason I've done this at 50 frames per second is to show you that you don't need to even compromise. You can do this at 50 frames per second and it's still going to work. So let's go through the options. This is just some scripts that I've written so I can easily do this. But what I'm using here is FFmpeg. I started off with open um, record my desktop and just it just didn't work. It was dropping frames and going crazy. Then I looked up FFmpeg. Um, kind of tutorials and stuff about how you can use it to record your desktop and to multiplex um, streams together. And they just didn't work. And I'll get to you why they didn't work, why they didn't work in a minute. Let's just go through this. So the first option is the video size, which is the resolution of your monitor or the resolution of your screen, which is, of, this is the resolution of my screen. Frame rate, self-explanatory. Now this is the, just a quick idea about how FFmpeg actually works, you specify general options, then you specify the input streams, then you specify your filters, then you specify your output stream. Or oh, output streams, it's, it's a very versatile piece of piece of equipment actually. Something I was putting off for a while because the man page looks so massive, but it, it is really worth looking at. It's an incredible piece of software that these people have made. So this is the first input stream being specified here, and this is the option an option being passed to it. So the op options that you pass provide will apply to the next file that is specified, in this case x11 grab. So you sometimes see on an FFmpeg um, command line, you'll see the same option repeated because it's being applied to the next file that's specified. So thread queue size is the buffer, the buffer size for the input device. Now, if you're transcoding a file, that's unlikely to really matter because it's going to be kind of constrained by the CPU anyway. But when you've got a raw device like an X11 grab, then if the buffer's too small and this value defaults to 8, so it grabs 8 packets, then you will drop frames if your computer's not fast enough. My computer wasn't fast enough and I was dropping frames, so it took me a while to actually find this option. And this works. 512 works well. I haven't really op tried to optimize this down. I don't really care because 512 works. I'm not running out of memory, you know, and I'm, I'm not that obsessive, luckily. So the file here, the input is x11 grab device. So you need to compile FFmpeg with x11 grab. It probably will be by default, but, you know, just, just in case. And the i says that we're going to start on display 0 and at position zero, 0, and that in combination with the resolution gives you the entire screen. Then this is our next stream, which is the audio. I've got a Zoom H2N microphone that I've just bought. It's a really good microphone, so I want to use it in USB audio mode so I don't get any crackles or anything like that. And again, using the same thread queue size option, the input device is OSS, and this is the actual file, dev dsp8, which is what it is when I plug it in. On FreeBSD, they use OSS as the audio system. It's actually very good. You know, you get a lot of people complaining about Linux audio, you know, with Ulsa, Pulse Audio, Jack, and all this kind of stuff. OSS has been in base on FreeBSD for a long time, and it works very well, actually, as I can attest by this video. 
So that's the two input streams. And now this is a uh, saying what the video codec should be used. We don't need to specify which stream because there's only one video stream. So this is kind of mono a monomic, monomic for <laughs> saying the first video stream. And we're, gonna, we're using libx264 RGB. So there is a libx264 um, video codec which uses YUV420P color space. The, uh, the RGB color space is supposed to be a little bit faster according to some posts I read and some benchmark that some dude did. So I'm using this because I want it to be as fast as possible because I don't want any slowdown. CRF is a constant rate factor, which is a parameter that you can pass to the X264 codec. And zero means lossless. It goes up to 53, I think, where you can, you know, obviously lose loads and loads and get really, really small files. But with, because when you're doing a screencast and for programming and things, the screen doesn't t tend to change a lot. So you can actually get away with lossless and still have um, very reasonably small files, actually. And now I'm using a preset for the video stream for this codec called Ultrafast. There are a lot of kind of knobs and dials that you can twiddle for X264 encoding, which I'm sure, you know, these release groups that you see on um, uh, Pirate Bay or whatever, uh, all experts at. I'm not an expert at this, so I'm just going for this Ultrafast option, which seems to work really well. Now, the audio codec is PCM S16 LE. And this is a dual channel, I've got the microphone in dual channel mode, sampling at 48k kilohertz. And this is actually just pass through. So there's no encoding going on here because I don't want any hangover from the encoding. And because audio is actually very small, you know, even uncompressed audio is small relative to the video. And I'm going to use these, I'm going to upload these to YouTube. And usually I re-encode it all anyway in KDEN Live. And I've got a two terabyte mirrored RAID on this machine as well as an SSD where all the files are. So I just don't care. I prefer just to have high quality audio and then re-encode it. Now, this next option is the critical option. So on most, if you go and look up how to grab your desktop using FFmpeg, most of the examples out there do not provide this option. They don't tell you that you need to do this. And what this is, it applies a filter. So this says apply a filter, the A resample filter to the audio after decoding. And, and the options are async equals one. That means that to stretch the audio and squeeze the audio so that it synchronizes with the video and the effort First PTS means that the first position is position zero. Now, this seems really obvious, right? Synchronize the audio with the video. But none of the tutorials and so on seem to mention it. Nobody seems to know that you need to do this. Uh, it took me hours to find this. So there's this guy here. I was on some guy's blog recording frame-perfect high-resolution screencasts I, mind to f I found eventually. And some guy, Tim, commented where he mentioned this. And that's really what saved my ass. And so this is why I'm sharing it here. Because I guess intuitively, most people probably think if you provide two streams, it will synchronize them. But it doesn't. And if you don't do this, what I found was it will start recording and maybe you'll get a few seconds of audio and then it will just disappear from the stream. And if you look at record my desktop, it must be doing something similar because with Record My Desktop, it was even worse. You know, the frame rates were terrible and it was, the audio would just be out of sync. You know, just sometimes behind, sometimes after it was horrible. Uh, <laughs> so this option just is really the one you need. Like I spent hours messing around with codec options, messing around with even like the resolution and the frame rate, getting slight tweaks here and there. Like, oh, the audio has gone on for a few seconds more. I must be getting closer to a good setting. It was, it was all kind of bullshit. The only option I needed was this, this synchronize the audio and the video. Then you don't even need to pass through the audio. You can actually use pretty much whatever codec you want and you can add compression on here and you probably won't drop frames. You can get away with a hell of a lot more. This is how it should be. This is what you would expect, right? From a Core i7 machine with eight, eight cores. The Y option means to overwrite the file without prompting, and I want this option on, but 
also it does seem to help with with help so that the first few frames are not dropped that might be some kind of voodoo and it might just be in my mind because i've been doing this for quite a few hours today but i saw other people also saying that it helps so since i'm doing it anyway it doesn't hurt but it's just worth considering in case you are not doing that and you're getting this prompt to overwrite the files and you're seeing some frames dropped that maybe that is affecting it. I mean, I haven't looked at their code. I don't know what they're doing when they put this prompt up, but maybe that's affecting the way that they're... It's adding a few cycles here or there. I'm, I don't know. But anyway, there you go. So that's it. That's how you can get frame perfect full screen video casting on your FreeBSD or Linux machine. I'm super excited about this now. I'm thinking I should connect up my webcam as well and put that in as a stream and stick it on the lower bottom right of the screen or something you know it seems fantastic looking forward to doing screen screencast now okay i hope that was useful to you and thanks for watching